Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Shay coming back at y'all with another episode of the Emmaus Proposition. And man, it's good to be back with y'all. This is uh, part two of our conversation. Uh, at least my bladder's empty. I don't know what this guy's doing. He's been champing it out. <laughs> Campbell, I. Okay, no, I'm not going to say that. We went, so I am. We went horse riding one time, yeah. and um, man, they can go, dude. Once they start going, it's like a river, it's man. It's Pringles, man. It's, Except water, it's <laughs> everywhere. Once they, once they pop, we can't stop. <laughs> um, good to have y'all back for the immense proposition, man. Like, like always, everything we do around here, man. We just we want to point it back to the glory of God, man. And that's what we saw Jesus do uh, as he, after his resurrection. He's walking with a couple of his disciples, and he's pointing out to them throughout the scriptures, man. And that's it's like thousands of years of material that Jesus probably had to wade through and, and teach his disciples about. But he showed them how everything points back to Christ, man. And here we are, thousands of years later, after the resurrection, and we're still talking about how everything in all creation points back to the glory of Christ, man. And so we're going to part two this thing because I have some more mm -hmm. questions for Troy. Um I don't want to go back to Marvel because I think he's wrong. A couple <laughs> That's fair. I but that. check this out. So obviously you have you have Marvel comics. Yep. You have DC comics. Dark Horse. You have Dark Horse, um, which is owned by DC, kind of. Kind of by yeah. DC. Um, what other comic book stuff do you enjoy that's out there? <laughs> so it was kind of funny. Sarah and I were watching some stuff, um, and we were both reminded of the days that we used to <laughs> read Archie comics. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I dabbled with that as a kid, and then Farside. Like, so Gary Larson and Calvin and Hobbes and stuff Oh, like wow. That. Yeah. So I, not a big Sunday comics guy, but like Farside and yeah. Calvin and Hobbes were like my jam growing up. Where does um, Firefly rank in your? Because I, I don't necessarily think that was a comic, but it's not. But as a cult it, following, as like a cult one. following kind of thing, where, where does that rank in your uh, in your <sighs> likability? So it's a show that I love and hate at the same time. What? So we're gonna get into some me ticking people off territory. Uh, <laughs> I love the show. It's yes. where uh, I grew to love Nathan Fillion as an actor. Yes. It's where um, Alan Tudyk came in to the scene. Uh, Is that Wash? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I love the talent that came out of that and the kind of mythos that those two actors and various other talents came. For sure. I'm glad that they wrapped it up with the Serenity movie. Um because I actually don't think it should have been a full-length series. I'm kind of glad that Fox pulled the plug on it. So, allow me to kind of <laughs> explain why. When you have a show where every person is the same personality, they're the same, they're all, like, you take Han Solo and you divide him up into ten parts, you get the cast of Firefly. What? What? Everyone was Han Solo in some way, shape, or form. Um, the only character that really stood out as unique all the way through, if you get into the comics for Firefly and stuff like that, was... That's it. Firefly didn't have comics. Well, they, after the show got oh, canceled, you have all these spin-offs. Okay, okay, okay. So, I gotcha. um, because they wanted to continue the story. Sure. Um, I'm suddenly blanking on his name. But the bishop, he's uh, the preacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, he, Shepherd book, Shepherd book. Yeah, he is hands down from the show to the cartoon to the comics, not cartoon, the comics. I feel like he was a truly unique and fascinating character that didn't get the depth that it deserved mm. on screen. That they kind of went into in the comics and say what you want about. Um, Gosh, I'm blinking on names. Um, the guy that wrote and directed. Okay. Um, Wheaton? Joss Whedon. Josh Whedon. So, say what you want about Joss Whedon being a pervert. 
and all that stuff. <laughs> um, but he knew how to write good characters. All right, and I'm not a fond person of cancel culture. I don't think you throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sure, you just recognize that maybe the baby took a crap in the bathwater, yeah. and you clean the baby in the bath and move on with your life instead of trying to ruin fun for everybody else. Um, Insert the Puritans. <laughs> Sorry, don't get me started. Um, I'm so glad that people and Martin are Luther. I'm s- <laughs> now you're being offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Luther is my spirit animal. <laughs> oh my gosh. He had a disdain for a certain people group. He did. I don't have that same disdain, but I definitely have some <laughs> similar idiosyncrasies where I just get irrationally angry and I try to justify it with Christ. Oh boy. Um, that being said, so with with Shepard Book, Joss Whedon wrote that character to be a man with a mysterious background sure. that ended up being a preacher and sure. he had a like a pronounced renowned deep faith mm-hmm. that was unbecoming of the rest of the mythos of that show yeah yeah for sure and even when i wasn't a christian watching that i was gravitating towards the fact that this dude knew a whole lot about military tactics yeah. and seemed to have even connections to like the inner like the uh, the the federalists yeah um, and somehow was just like, oh, cool, we're just going to do surgery on this guy, even though you're part of the brown coats yeah. kind of thing. Um, the other thing that kind of makes me kind of steer clear from Fireflying um, is Firefly has a fan base, and this is what I began, not just with them, but fan bases began to make me not like things. Mm. Um the idolatry of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. It, so it could do no wrong kind of thing. Not just that, but the fact that like there are people who have weddings that are brown coat weddings. Yeah. There are people who Yeah, that's across the board too. That that's not That's just, not just them. Yeah, it's yeah. like you can get cool. into gaming, you can get it like people have Mass Effect and Dragon Age weddings yeah, yeah. and Fable and just it gets into it gets into a territory where it just kind of grosses me out. And not in the sense of, like, ew, gross, but, like, it's just that, that like, sinful feeling of, like, this is going too far. Yeah. This is crossing from being a good thing into a god thing. And, like, oh. I'm watching a bunch of people dancing around a golden cow. Yeah. You know what oh. I mean? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. I... I mean, oh my gosh, dude. I mean, if you, if you take, if you take that thought... That's very nearly everything that comes out of Hollywood. I know. Like you had, so, you had kids, like they were, they did like a Burger King commercial <laughs> of uh, it was Twilight, yeah. and it was a uh, team, uh, team Edward and Team Jacob, <laughs> Team Edward yeah. and Team Jacob, and so, they had like actual like yeah, people were going for it. So, and I say this after in part one, I kind of jokingly called myself a fanboy. Mm. I say that in jest because I don't actually consider myself one. Okay. Um, only because I don't think it's the end all be all. I don't think it's the best form of entertainment that is cross. It's not like the end all be all. Sure. So with that being said, when you get into territories, like there's sports fans that go way above and beyond way. And it is because I grew up around that is why I don't actually watch sports. Gotcha. I can watch it and be entertained. Sure. I don't associate with it. Okay. I don't get into it. Like I'm, I've been a Niners fan since I was in third grade. Because it was the closest thing to us, right? I don't pick a team because I like the colors or the team itself. Right. I pick the team because of how close it was. Sure. Just like I'm an athletics fan, right? I don't have – we don't have anything in Nevada except the Raiders now. Yeah. But who wants the Raiders as their favorite team except and Raiders fans? Who wants to go to Las Vegas? I mean, really. No, it's – Honestly. Poor man's New York. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot there. And when you make your whole entire oh my gosh, it is super hot. Though. You make your whole entire city industry and infrastructure based off of gambling and prostitution. You're gonna earn. You attract fire. a certain crowd. You're for yeah, sure boomers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's not entirely true. Okay, <laughs> did the boomers? Oh, don't make me have this conversation. Ruin comic books? No, no, we did. Who did? America. 
Oh man, yeah, that might actually be true. <laughs> I so but explain. What do you mean? Well, I'm not the kind of person who just picks a people group and just says they're to blame. Mm. Not, at the core, like I know I said that with Americans, but like as a generalized public, we have oversaturated the market so much with our fascination of heroes mm. that even though we keep saying there isn't superhero fatigue, we're starting to see that. And that goes back to why I think Marvel is starting to get into other genres because they want to show they're not just a superhero genre. Mm. They want to show we can make Alan Beale. We can make stuff that's super psychologically thrilling and not even be about the superhero. We can make Moon Knight. Moon Knight, yeah. Which, great show. I love yeah, the was, depth of research that they did into good. that. And I love the Egyptian Dude. Uh, stuff. Out so of, cool. It was really cool. Freaking the mummy ruined so many perceptions of Egyptians. So. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. That, I think, goes back into my feelings about like the fan base stuff with just the uh, kind of that ideal, the, the, uh, that I just said earlier, <laughs> the ideology. Idolatry. idolatry. Thank yeah. you. I was saying ideology of idolatry. Yeah, yeah. But, well, the idolatry of ideology is a thing, too. Jeez Louise. Oh, boy. Um, we won't get into that. Um, unless you want to. Um, Your wife is already going to kill me, so <laughs> we will do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she knows how much I can talk. <clears throat> I did tell you I'm a chatty white guy earlier, mm, so. Mm -hmm. so. You did describe yourself that way. So it kind of just kind of, we are to blame. Like, America has this thing where we go, this is good, and then, like, a, a big guy at a buffet, we just kind of stuff her face until we're bursting at the seams. And then we have to have, like, a triple bypass and help roker ourselves, and then suddenly we're back at the buffet, but we don't want to eat a thousand pizzas anymore. We're going to go and switch to eating a thousand hot dogs. I hear that, right? <laughs> The imagery is crazy right now. Sorry. I hear that. I don't think I got superhero fatigue. I don't think so either. I think what I gravitated toward with the with the superhero genre, number one, um, I feel like Hollywood has ruined comedy. Well, Everything's a fart joke now. There's no like, there's no... Technically comedy ruined comedy. If you want to, want to get into I, I would comedy disagree with that. Here's the thing. So I look at um, somebody like Mel Brooks. Who, who ran a really good fart joke, but knew where it was within the scheme of of the movie yeah. to actually pull it off effectively. So there's there's a fart joke in um, like Blazing Saddles yep. when, they're, when they're sitting around the campfire and like they're eating too much beans. Perfect timing. Yep. But he didn't have to keep going back to it. Some of the comedies right now, everything's got to like have, like there's got to be some guy jumping out the trunk of a car, butt booting naked, or there's got to be... Hangover. Yeah. Yeah. Or we watched um, the movie with uh, Sandra Bullock and... Um, really? You didn't Tatum like that? Channing. Yeah. One, I don't think they had great chemistry. No. But... I just want to see it because Brad Pitt's doing a comedy role. Right. I was looking forward to the whole thing. Yeah. But then I watched it, and it was like... It was cheap. It was cheap comedy. Gotcha. In some places. And so, like... I would love I would love to watch comedies, but I think one cancel culture cancel culture has ruined where comedy movies can go, and I think the fact that people don't have any morality anymore, you can't just have like a a good comedy. Like we watched um, Date Night, mm. that movie was hilarious yeah. to me, and um, and it was just it was just fun comedy. Like yeah. they didn't they didn't need to do extra other than comedy. I'm a sci-fi guy. Yeah. And so, superhero genre, yes. Star Wars Cup. Rats raw. <laughs> <laughs> All, yes, I'm sorry. They ruined Star Wars too. Um, <coughs> sci-fi actually is, to me, it's what we're trying to do with entertainment. Like, you're trying to take the audience into a place where they can use their imagination. But not so, suspend their disbelief too much. But not suspend it too much. Like, yeah. it's, it still has to be, like, reachable. Grounded. Or at least the people have to be relatable in a way, right? right. And I feel like, even as much as... Um, so I know we were talking about Marvel earlier. And um, even with 
the superhero genre, the people were those heroes were still relatable. Mm-hmm. This phase, they're becoming less relatable. So I, Lamar. I I do not get where some of the I don't get where some of the writing is going, and so that's part of like it's not superhero fatigue; it's bad storytelling. Is why things are changing. DC is doing a terrible job. They can't even release. They can't even release a movie. They can't even because they're because they're Freaking so. Ezra Miller can't stay out of prison. He can't stay out of jail. They're doing <laughs> weird stuff. They are. They're so concerned about uh, <coughs> treasury issues. Yeah. Current cultural issues. They're they're so f- hyper focused in on it. I love the fact that Marvel is doing different cultural stuff. Like they're doing. They did Egyptian stuff with Moon Knight. They did. Pakistani, uh, Pakistani stuff. stuff and like Pakistani Indian stuff with Miss Marvel, right? Depending on who you ask, too, some of the Deshi people actually don't like how it was handled because they didn't pick a side. Sure, yeah, but for for an American diet, it was like we knew nothing about cool. we knew the nothing about it, and so now was, we know stuff. It was great, yeah, and, and it was informative. Um, those those were good, and I, and I think they were handled well, but the over the overemphasizing of them. As opposed to just good storytelling, I feel like a, a good storyline would already start to incorporate. But where where Marvel became popular was the post credit scenes. Yep, because they were starting to like they Build. were weaving the Puzzle story pieces. together. Yeah, that to me is good storytelling. That, that's a part of the good storytelling. Is like, don't worry, you guys. All this stuff is coming together right now. They in the Eternals, they had Star Fox. Super weird. I had, I had no idea Freaking where it was coming from. Harry Styles and his pervert character. My superpower is rape. <laughs> yeah, oh, gosh. You had... Uh, it is, unfortunately. And it, I don't know. You said it's not Disney. I think it's Disney. That's fair. They're, so, okay. It, they're, can, they're ruining everything. And like I said in the last video, I don't want them to get their hands on I'm like a more, dark horse. Yeah. Or I don't want them to branch out into... Other stuff that has the potential to be good. There's this one guy that just came out with his own comic book line. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Isom, I think is the name of the character. Um, oh, man, I'll think of it and I'll put it in the description. But he's coming out with his own yeah. comic book line because he's like, I I don't like their storytelling. Like they, He doesn't like where things are going, so he wants to do his own thing. He's a, he's a comic book guy from, like, the womb. Yeah. So he's watched... The, the storytelling within comics just go from Word. bad to worse, and, yeah. and now where we are now. Because I think so, it's worse, if that's a word. It is. It's just children using it. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> sorry. So I'm going to rewind a little bit, because I feel like I have, a, I have a couple of avenues of thought that I want to kind of tie up, sure. from at least my perspective. Mm-hmm. So in regards to the comedy thing, and I'll make this super short and succinct. Mm-hmm. For every Mel Brooks and Edgar Wright, you're going to have your Taika Waititi and your Seth MacFarlane. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. and that's just the nature of comedy. So I had a roommate who was a stand-up comedian, and he wasn't great, but I learned a lot about the com- the comedy writing process sure. watching him. Sure. And I watched a few documentaries because I suddenly was engrossed in this when I didn't really choose to be. Mm-hmm. And I've learned some things. Comedy, it will always be its own fault. Comedy shifts and changes, ebbs and flows, because... Everyone is one moment away from being Carlos Mencia and stealing someone else's joke. Sure. So, in that regard, they're going to see what what is the flash in the pan that people are going to go, ooh, to. And they're going to mimic that. So, the reason why these fart jokes are going on too long and so many is because some teenager out there went and saw the movie on right. Mom's Dime three times. Okay? So, like, the reason why The Hangover exists mm. is because of us. It is we... We are the lower demographic. Consuming it. We are the ones consuming it. Sure. So if you want comedy to be smarter, watch smarter comedy. And engage in it. Comment on it. Jump on Reddit and say something. Because a lot of the writers for those shows go to those subreddits. Sure. Because they want to see how people are responding. Sure. Because at the end of the day, they want their fan base to continue to consume their content and grow it. So if people are talking about it, you see where I'm going with that. I almost because it, it seems like right now content those content creators you're talking about, um, they're going to those places mm-hmm. and they're reading people's comments and then they're just calling them trolls. Sometimes and, and don't listen to to the critique that they have of their content. Then the show you're watching is doomed to begin with. Marvel. And, 
So that's where I start to disagree, is I have seen... <sighs> part of me agrees and part of me disagrees. So I agree with you that there's a lot of... The quality of storytelling has gone down as the quantity of content has come up. Okay. Right. And that's just a natural thing that happens. That goes back to what I was trying to say. When you have a show last so long, eventually you're going to see some wrinkles in whether it's good anymore. Mm. Whether it's fatigue or because the writers are like swapping out and rotating out because they got their cred. You know, now they have their portfolio built up. They can go and do other things. Um, what I don't see happening anytime soon is Marvel pulling a D&D Game of Thrones situation where they completely write themselves so far into a corner that they just pull the plug and tell everyone to get over it. Oh, no. That, that's why they created the multiverse. So now anytime... That is not why they created the multiverse. Now, anytime they write themselves into a corner, they can say, that's a oh, thing. that was Earth 321. Okay. Now we're going to go over to Earth so the Marvel, The Marvel comics, and I'll try and make this one quick, too, because I don't want to make this all about Marvel. I don't either. Um... Uh, I said we weren't going to go back tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to try and make it quick, I promise. So the comics, the multiverse thing has always been a thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, always. If you watch Multiverse of Madness, they use the word incursion. Incursion is the reference of two universes colliding. There's a whole story arc built around that. Sure. That is what they're building towards at the end of Phase 6. Okay. Um, Kevin Feige, they last San Diego Comic-Con, they came out and said, here's the plan. Probably what they're going to do with Kang, yeah, since Kang, that already almost so, happened. Kang is in Phase 6, right. he has his own movie, right. and then, like, Avengers, Kang Dynasty, and then they're going to do the Secret Wars. Which is awesome, right? Because they could bring in X-Men through I all that process, I don't know how too. much of the X-Men we're going to see, so let's just put that in the... Let's just... No! that's all, I, I feel like that's one of the only things that's going to redeem it. I, we're not going to make this about Marvel. Um, but I just I wanted to kind of just go back to those quick statements. Um, so, with... The sci-fi <laughs> stuff. Okay, so, real quick. Yeah. I feel like they're also doing it with Star Wars. Oh, dude, 100%. We're not Star Wars fatigued right now. But the content the of the stuff is, so bad. is really bad. And so I'm, I'm not looking forward the way I should be to, like, a High Republic. And so Star Wars is going to come out with High Republic... Um, did Hopefully, there confirmation of that. Is there confirmation of that, or are you just kind of speculating? I'm hoping. hoping. I, I, th I think this is me engaging in hope. Okay. Because I, I know they're done. I know they want to be done with the Star Wars saga. I mean, I'm they sorry. They want to be done Skywalker. with the Skywalker. The Skywalker. I want saga. the Skywalkers out. I, and I'm okay I, with that. I'm so tired okay of the family. But a bunch of incest. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the High Republic has a lot of potential. And I think they're going to ruin it with bad storytelling because, like, I was actually looking forward to Kenobi. For, this, for, for, for them to answer the question, what was he doing while he was on Tatooine? I never cared. And I don't think they ever answered the question. They didn't. So, so much so, right, that they took, oh my gosh, they took Obi-Wan Kenobi, who takes Luke to Tatooine. And then, for some reason, they merged the storyline of Ben and Leia, who, when she sends him the message in episode four, she doesn't know who he is. She just knows of him. She just knows of him. He's, she's heard stories. If you've gone through a traumatic event like being kidnapped yeah, yeah, and no, shot I know, at, I know, I know. and you're 10 years old, you're going to you, remember that for the rest yeah. of your life. It's not like she was four or three. Right. Ten, that is, that is like, that is a core memory. Yes. That's a really core. bad story. That's a, that is a loophole or like a, a plot hole. Continuity. That's, that's terrible. Yeah. And so now it's as if they don't like Star Wars fans. That's what it feels like. Oh, for dude, Star, for if Star you Wars you want to fan. talk about people, you want to talk about writers that hate their fans, let's, let's, let's talk about the Halo franchise. Ugh. That, that shelf right there. All Star Wars. Where I'm pointing at. Is all Star Wars. <laughs> they had, dude. I'm telling you, they they could stop what they're doing right now and say, "Hey guys, how this was a mistake feel? we made." How did you feel when Disney said, "We don't care about the expanded universe"? I my heart almost like dropped out of my dude. Chest. I grew up with the Knights of the Old Republic. 
Revan, yes. Malik, yes. all that stuff. They could have brought all that. Where they were, how old people were in real life, is how old they were in the storyline of the Yuzong Vong. The Yuzong Vong bringing them to life? They could have run nine movies just with the Yuzong Vong. It was it was an awesome it was a it was awesome storytelling. Chewbacca dies. He's like trying to push up a planet. Everybody has kids. The kids, some are going light, some are going dark. Yep. They did weird stuff in the movies with Ben Solo, and I'm like, what are we? Because everyone was hoping that's what. Yeah. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing something that's so good? So, but it's because they they got focused in Star Wars. Even Star Wars got focused in on some of these like cultural issues mm -hmm. instead of just like telling a story. And so they got they got sidetracked with um, you know you want to know where I really started to notice it was when um, I think it was episode. Nine when they brought Lando in, and then like toward the end of the movie, he like he's flirting with the uh, the stormtrooper chick, and I, it, it felt like somebody's grandpa. And I'm like, why would they? Why would they do this? It was just it was it, there's they do it they they're doing all kind of weird stuff. So first I'm gonna have to actually it's bad ask storytelling. You. It is bad storytelling, but first yeah. I'm gonna have to ask a question: Is do you think it's possible to have cultural things still be part of storytelling and still be good? Or do you think there needs to be complete separation? No, I think um, when, it's the, when it's the focus of your storytelling, okay. I, think okay. it, I think it comes off weird. Because like, if you, if you look historically, like, and you know I'm a bit of a history guy too, like, any time major movements happen, it's because of like entertainment's engagement with Sure. With, with culture stuff. So, but you're right. It's not because they made it a focus. They made it part of something. They made it part of it. So, like, Star Trek was great at it. Dude. Star Trek, the first one? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. It was, she was a boss on that show. They they didn't give her, like, she had to a major Shatner. role. And, <laughs> did she, I didn't know her. Yeah, there's a scene, there's an episode where she kills her. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, Kurt. Shatner was after everybody, man. He was the, he was the first galactic perv. <laughs> I can't say that. I think like Buck Rogers or somebody was oh, pretty yeah, pervy too. And Flash 100%. Gordon, Flash 100%. Gordon was, was kind of pervy too. Yeah, he was flashing his Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, no, picture. I think I think they did. I think they did well. They were like they they handled cultural issues that wasn't that wasn't like browbeat overhead. But if you look at the Star Wars now, like Star Trek Discovery, okay, Star Trek Discovery was kind of one. I didn't watch it. Awful. Didn't watch it. So, it, it didn't start awful. It got it progressively got more awful. Okay, so in that regard, then I, I I've been talking to my stepdad about this, and we okay. kind of talked how my my family's a little more on the extreme hyper, hyper Republican side. Hi, hyper Republican yeah, side. Yeah. Um, love them, but they were kind of talking about how there's why is everything so political now, and they were talking about stuff that was like what they watched when they were younger. Mm. So it's not that. What I think we're looking at is we're, we're, we have a rose-tinted lenses on, mm -hmm. and we're looking back at things like Okura or things that we enjoyed when we were younger sure. that were political Sure, that older generations were probably still complaining about. We just don't remember. Maybe. And so now that we're, we're the old guys seeing this new stuff going like, oh, yeah. why, is, you know, why is this a-hole kneeling in you know, NFL? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? like... What you just what I just thought of when you just said that. So um, remember Archie Bunker? Did yeah. you ever watch um, it was All in the Family? No, no. Dang, I just aged myself. It's okay. Anywho, there's um, a huge age gap between us. So you know sense. who's? Oh, <laughs> you, do you know who George Jefferson is? No. Oh gosh. I don't watch. So to be fair, I don't watch a lot of sitcoms. I didn't grow up on sitcoms. Okay. I mean, so, to give some credit to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Archie Bunker was... What was by the show? Today's, by today's standard, one of the biggest races on television. Probably. Yeah. What was but, the show? Uh, so, it was, it was a... Um, 
middle uh, middle class family. Okay. Archie Bunker was the uh, the patriarch of the family, okay. and so his wife was very um, demutive. She was like submissive. Oh, Archie! Oh, uh, okay. I, I may have heard that. Voice. Yeah. Oh, oh, Archie! <laughs> Made fun of on like yeah. Futurama or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, probably so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, George Jefferson. <laughs> Character. And I'm sorry, Archie Bunker would say whatever he wanted to. Whatever came into his character's mind, he would say. He would just say. And so he's like, "Oh, there's another black guy moving on our street. Oh, wow. I guess we got to move now." Like that Dang. was that was Archie Bunker, right? Oh, yeah. the Jews are coming in again. Like he was just, wow. Like, he was go. He was he going would not for like it. Lenny Kravitz. No, no, black and Jewish. No, gay too. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. No. George Jefferson okay. was a black version. Of Archie Bunker, so he hated white people. So he hated white people. Okay, and and, the, and their shows centered around that. Did he hate Germans? I don't. I think he was just they're white. For a lot of black people, white people are white people. Like they don't get into. I think that hasn't changed. No, not at all. I'm, I I can honestly say that hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah. They they would not. A lot of black folks. I don't. I don't know. A lot of black folks don't know culturally looking at a Czech versus a Russian. An Italian versus an Italian a Greek. versus a Greek. Like they, okay. most I don't think most folks really dive that deep into it. Sure. Um, but they tackled cultural issues, mm-hmm. but did it in a way that was still like it wasn't the centerpiece of the show. What was the centerpiece of the show was the absurdity of the characters. Okay, and that's why you think it'd be canceled is because most people don't understand the nuance they don't, of the writing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, but I, but I think you could feel I think you could feel it when it's if the show was primarily about those things, it would be a totally different show than yeah. Here's how uh, this over the top character would say these things, right? And here's his redemption arc in a, in a lot of ways. So you know, Did how, they have redemption arcs. Minor ones, like at the end of each show, there okay. was a like a the, lesson, the lesson learned, learned. kind okay. of thing. Yeah, that's a trope of sitcoms. So. Yeah, okay. And so they would they would always got or they get put in their place and they have to like reflect on themselves. Yeah. Hey, I might have made a mistake, but I'm still going to be the the jerk. Yeah. That you all know and love, kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, very um, the honeymooners. Did you ever watch the honeymooners? No, but I've heard of that one. Yeah, the honeymooners. Um, Get rich quick schemes. Uh, Bam zoom straight to the moon. Ralph Cran- uh Ralph Crandon. Like yeah. he was, he was always like abusing his wife, abusing his wife and stuff. Very yeah. very verbally abusive yes. to her. And so it was a, it was a, um, it was just a character. Yeah. That was just extreme, but would always like learn a lesson at the end of it. And most generations today would look at that and say, why are we having this guy learn to be a better person? Right. They would, they would go, why are we... It. They would just cancel it. Yeah. Because our generation... Sorry, my generation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's two, man. Okay. Americans in general okay. do not have an interest in redemption. They have no interest in mercy. So then here's our road to Emmaus. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why, why do you think... Oh, Okay. Why do you think Hollywood wants to write out redemptive story arcs? Instead, they have something like a Shang-Chi who needs no redemption. I think, and this might get a little on the political side, and this is me speculating. This is not me having a prepared answer. I'm going to be kind of... This is all off the top. I'm going to be kind of circling the plane a bit until I land. Okay. I think the reason why Hollywood doesn't do redemption arc stories anymore is because they recognize that so many of their elite are beyond saving. Dang. Look at Epstein. Look at the connections to that. I, I'm going to be, again, I'm going to be careful with that. But, like, look at... I mean, look at... Some of the people that we as Americans look up to and kind of idolize in Hollywood and treat them like they can do no wrong. The Johnny Depp's, the, um, gosh, I forget his name, Forrest Gump. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks left the United States around the time that this all kind of went down. And if you ask me, that makes it very sus. Mm. It's very suspicious. Mm. So he's an expat. Now he can't be extradited. 
in the event that, oh, you, you're a bad man. No one wants to think that Tom Hanks is a bad man. No one wants to think that John or Dwayne Johnson is a bad man. People don't... I think Hollywood doesn't want to do the, the story arc like that anymore. One, because it does eventually get people to start talking about mercy and grace. Mm. And that kind of draws that connection. Mm -hmm. And right now, Hollywood is so deeply rooted in satanic stuff. Whether it's actively practicing it or subversive. Mm -hmm. I think they're so deeply ingrained in it right now that they're trying to keep those notions out of the thoughts and minds of Americans. Their con average consumer. The ones that don't think think sure because um so this is gonna be somewhat tangential recently i've been noticing a trend on certain subreddits based off of marvel and other things where people go why did this happen and everyone in the subreddit the thread is going mother effer read or watch pay attention sure the plot is right there people don't know how to pay attention mm. people don't know how to critically think sure when they consume media sure yeah, so I would say that's true across the board. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, and it's only gotten worse. Yeah, I mean, and that's a symptom of Common Core and all that stuff, and that's a whole other tangential topic. But I don't think Hollywood cares about the redemption arc right now. Is either they're bored of it, and they want something where there is no redemption arc. Mm. Their elite are beyond redemption, and therefore don't want people to see how beyond re beyond redemption that they are, or satanic ritualistic stuff that's going on sure um so much so man that even because i think there was a a christ story arc like if we look we look at a character like superman yep he had a he had a christ story arc even even the first captain america even the matrix even the matrix had a had a christ story arc, story. right yeah i where i'm where i'm gravitating what you what you're saying now we're, we're getting ready to have the thunderbolts come out we have Suicide Squad. Yeah. That's that, that's kind that's of kind of the thing right now. Well, outside Birds, of Hollywood, Birds of Prey. Yeah, outside of Hollywood, there's even so a, another thing that I didn't kind of touch on is I'm huge into like tabletop RPG, like Dungeons and Dragons, sure. and super nerdy crap like that. There's a whole community built around that. That there's like online actual like Twitch stream with live plays where a very popular one had a whole campaign arc about the screw ups. The, the Breakfast Club kids. Sure. Where they were the heroes that didn't want to be heroes. Right. People gravitate towards not wanting to be normal. And gravitate toward, I can still be good without redemption. And that's not what... I can, I can, I can reach my full potential, if you will. Without I, I, correction. Without any kind of admitting where my faults are. Yeah. And turning away from my faults. And turning to something else, Captain America. Even as as his storyline progressed, he got less and less where he was like a, re, a a redemptive character. He just got tired, and went from red, white, and blue to by the time we had Endgame, black. Yeah. So now even um, he, had, he had a reverse arc. I would say he had a reverse arc. Of almost a devolving arc. And so by the time, like, you, they made you fall in love with Captain America because he was a scrawny guy yeah. but had heart. I could do this all day. And I could, I could do this all day. Give him the serum, and it wasn't the serum that made him super. It was him. It was his character. His it was the strength of his character. His integrity. By the time you got to Endgame, yes, it was still the strength of his character. He still had the character and integrity, but he was so... He was the... He evolved a little. He was the... Well, he was the tired veteran. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. He's... But he was definitely different. He... I think... So, I'd be curious to... I would need to talk... I mean, I know you're a bit of a vet yourself, but I would want to talk with, like, other, like, like multiple tours of duty. you say real vets? No, not real vets. But I'm talking about, like, hardcore multiple tours of duty... Like surviving IED sure. level. I just got shot out with a rocket. It's okay. I hear you. I hear you. What you're saying, Troy? You just. You know. Do you know Sam Brown? You, does the name sound familiar? Yes, I do. Know I want to talk Brown. to. I want to talk yeah, yeah. to Sam Brown. Yeah, yeah. And he seems guys. like a super cool guy. He Sam was, Brown, if you was, ever see this man, come on the show, man. 
That'd be sweet. He was actually once once upon a time he was my boss. Oh, nice. Um, tremendous amount of respect for the man. Uh, he's a Christian. Yeah, and has a legit, genuine, deep faith. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk to someone like Sam about characters like Steve Rogers mm-hmm. and their devolution, as you put it. Because mm-hmm. what I see is the natural evolving of the warrior soul getting tired. Because mm. he is the protector, he's the defender. All the way through the Sokovian Accords, the whole point of Civil War is, yes, he's harboring a fugitive with the Winter Soldier, but there is so much at play behind that. But if the, you, I mean, if you look at it, though... Like looking at his story arc throughout the movies, he started making concessions, little little small concessions as as his story arc progressed. Those Even, concessions were in the face of greater evils, though. DC like, did the same thing with Superman. Yeah, that's he made was. little concessions. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, uh, and maybe I just He-Man. I hope they don't do it to him. But they've already started making him make concessions. With the with the one that uh, which I didn't watch, I didn't. I, I watched one. I watched the first episode, man, yeah. and I'm like, I'm not gonna like this. I don't have ties to him, man, so I, I I will apologize to that. Deep ties to him, man. That's like your childhood. That was my childhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like they took something that he never became the angry vet, mm-hmm. but he was at him and Skeletor were after it. I mean, it's a cartoon, so you know. Whatever. Well, it was also cartoon in the eighties. The depth of storytelling has changed. It was deep. It was still deep, but it, it has deep. changed. And you don't. Oh my gosh, I man, we could do a whole show on eighties cartoons because there was like there was almost a lesson learned after each episode. Uh, Thundercats did. Thundercats yeah. did. I did watch. GI Joe did it. Yeah. After after every episode of GI Joe, they were like, What's "Learning the is half the battle." Yeah. Yeah. Now. There's no lessons. There's a little, there's like boobs hanging out yeah. in cartoons yeah. like that that seven year olds are ingesting and say what you want, man. Like I the first time I got exposed to stuff was at five years old, and that has carried with me for the last thirty something years. It's damaging. And um, introducing it to kids, even on a like a small level, to where they could just they see it, but they internalize it. They don't really do anything. They with don't it. recognize what it is until much but later. But then, like they just cut, they just kind of keep after it. Yeah. All the all those kind of things have progressively gotten worse. Hundred percent. With with media and what we're consuming, and that redemptive story arc was all through the '80s cartoons. And ironically, as we've gotten over sexualized, yeah, there's also a desensitiz- a desensitization to it. Yeah. To where now, there's. Again, I'm kind of going back to Reddit on this, but there's a common trend on Reddit where there's either super over-sexualized questions or what's something that's better than this? Yeah. Like, people are starting to kind of find this point where they're burnt out with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that kind of goes back to the Hollywood question where I don't think Hollywood realizes what to do with that because they're so used to just pushing smut, smut, smut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you know... Now we have these people that are so disjointed and disconnected on a gender level that, and I'm, that's, that's a whole nother topic. And I, <laughs> and I, I'm going to be careful with it just because I do have family that has kind of gone sure. down that path and sure. trying to be a solid witness, but not be affirming of it at the same sure. time because yeah, yeah. I don't want to compromise the integrity of the word for them. But we have reached a point in our society that people are so actively saying we don't need God, we don't need God, when they don't even know who God is. Mm -hmm. They just, it's kind of like that gossip, that rumor of like, oh, so-and-so is a bad person, so don't hang out with them. And then you accidentally meet this bad person, it turns out they're really nice, nice, (laughs) and they actually have a heart of gold, and they... You know, help old ladies cross the streets. No and it turns out that the reason why this person didn't like them is because they wouldn't help them with the thing that's bad. Right. You know, they had in character and integrity. Yep. So I think we're, tr- like, Hollywood, maybe not Hollywood actively, but the world, and this kind of revolves around, you know, Satan mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. The world is actively trying to treat Christ like the boogeyman. Ooh. I like that. 
That Ooh. actually might be the the uh, sure. That might be the uh, the title of this episode. And I, but like, and you can kind of see it. Yeah, there's no redemption arcs and stuff. Yeah, and anytime that there is like the good character, like. Let's 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 follow your thought process on like Steve Rogers yeah. devolving. He was the character, the integrity, the moral. Yeah. Even made the comment of like, I'm pretty sure God doesn't dress like that. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. like those kind of comments. And he slowly just gets into this tired, selfish guy that wants to travel back in time yeah, to yeah. back be back with Peggy Carter. Yeah. You know, like totally selfish. And but. to a degree, I don't fault that as the human in me. Right. But the Christian in me is like, no, the fight never ends. The fight keeps going. We right. have to be like Gideon. We have to be like Caleb. we got to take up our cross, our mantle, and keep plugging on, keep on trucking. Yeah. And, yeah, there's going to be days where you're tired. Yeah, there's going to be days that suck. But that's why people lifted Moses' arms. No it's because he couldn't lift it himself anymore that he had to support him. Yeah. And that goes back to my question or my statement in part one that my – falling away from the faith is because I chose not to tell you mm. that I'm struggling. I chose mm. not to tell Sean or Seth or my wife mm -hmm. or Tim or anybody. Right. Like, so the deconstruction of faith comes down to the shortcomings and failings of the individual mm. who is having their faith deconstructed because they couldn't be adult enough, yeah. mature enough to say, I'm floundering. I'm and drowning. I, and I think in a way, and I'm going to wrap it up here shortly. Uh, I think in a way, um, comic books are either, I don't know if it's chicken or egg, yeah. they're either telling the story of how we're getting there, or they're pushing the narrative and and speeding up the process. It's both. It's a little bit both. It's, it's a little bit both. Like, a great example is, you've heard the phrase, uh, life imitates art. Sure. So there's so many examples of that. Yeah, absolutely. And so... Then, that's, that's definitely what we're getting to now. And and thankfully, for the sake of Christ, he has gone to the cross mm. knowing that we were going to be here, knowing that we were going to going to get to the point where, um, because I think all these great civilizations have been through it. The Babylonians have been through it. The Romans have been through it. We get to this point where we stop glorifying God, and it be argued Babylon never did. We stop glorifying God. We start turning to ourselves and our own hedonism, and then um, all of our stories that we tell become less and less about God, and then we can't even see redemption anymore. Like, we get so buried up under it. So To end it on a positive note, though? Yes. So, in that, because I, I, again, I'm also a student right now, and I have to go through these stupid core education classes. The irony of it is it's kind of shown some interesting things. Like learning about the fall of relearning about the fall of Rome, right? right? So you talk about how we are learn like forgetting the redemption story, mm -hmm. but the first time someone hears the redemption story, it's that much sweeter because they've never heard it. Amen. I like that. Yeah, we will end it on a positive note <laughs> there, man. Like, man, Troy, thank you so much for course, coming man. through, man. I appreciate you. I'm obviously we're gonna have Troy back because we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Um, but yeah, y'all keep tuning in to the Amazed Proposition, man. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe if you're over on YouTube. Um, definitely, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, man, share it, share it, and keep uh, keep pushing the, the message out there, man. Because we just, we just want to glorify Christ in everything we do. We want to help folks talk about different subjects, but think about Christ at the same time. So, uh, love y'all. Hope y'all doing good. Hit me up at the email that's down in the description. Until next time, grace and peace.